All right. Um, okay, welcome everyone to We Are Endurance webinar series. Today we are going to, I, I have this cute little graphic. We, we are going to talk about the uh, run walk method. Um, we're gonna, many of you use the method, but maybe we'll, maybe you'll learn one or two things, we'll say. Um, for those of you who don't use the method, maybe you'll learn a couple of things. <laughs> All right, so let's start. All right, so first things first is the run walk or the walk run has been around for a really, really long time, probably since we all started, before we even started running, years and years ago, hundreds of years ago, people were walking and running and it didn't really become popularized until Jeff Galloway came along and popularized it. But if you read any of the books on um, running, they all talk about the run walk or the walk run method. And he was the one, Jeff Galloway, he really marketed it, but he didn't invent it. So I just wanna stress that because I thought that was really interesting. I always thought that he did invent it. I thought it was his brainchild and it really wasn't. So I thought that was interesting and it's an interesting point to, to point out. Now, um, in terms, let me just see if I can like change this up. Oh, here we go. That's much better. So in terms of Ambie Burfoot, I've been reading his book. It's a great book. It's called Run Forever. I'll just show it to you. And he was the one who was the editor of Runner's World magazine. He's authored a ton of books and he's a big proponent of the walk run method. Um, he talks about it in this book. He talks about it that, you know, people that when you start out, you should be using it. But he also feels that people over the age of 50 should be using it. And he talks a lot about it in this book. The Roadrunners Club of America, which is RRCA, which is um, what I am a coach with, they also suggest run walk uh, for beginners. Uh, they're very big on that. Um, you know, so there's a lot of different people and, and thoughts and um, ideas about the run walk method. So I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. So um, I started running, I did like a form of the run walk method back in 2011, 10, 2010, 2011, um, where I would run a little bit. I'd walk through the, uh, the water stops. I'd run to the next water stop and walk and so on. And, but it wasn't until I started training for the New York City Marathon that I really felt like I mastered it. And I worked directly with Jeff. He was wonderful. He offered to coach me for free, which was amazing. And I am totally grateful to him for doing that. Um, once that was finished, I thought, you know, I'd really like to give back to Jeff. So I started this group on Long Island in 2017 and have been teaching it ever since. Um, as I said before, I'm an RRCA running coach level one and a USA triathlon coach level one. Now it all starts with the magic mile. Sometimes I call it the manic mile. Sometimes I call it the miracle mile, <laughs> but it's a mile. And basically what you do is you warm up on the track. You warm up for 10, 15, 20 minutes. You do some drills and Jeff recommends a couple of drills. He recommends um, the shuffle where you actually bounce on your toes for 15 seconds and then 
you go into somebody's, uh, wait a second, hold on a minute. Ah, Morris is okay, sorry. So you bounce on your toes uh, for 15 seconds and then you walk for 30 seconds. And, you know, so that's one of Jeff's drills. It's called the shuffle. Another drill that he likes to do is called an accelerator glider, which starts off as a shuffle where you're bouncing on your toes for about 10 seconds, then you're running for 10 seconds, then you're running faster for 10 seconds. And you go back and then you walk. And that's another, and, and what that's also called, he calls it an accelerator glide, but it's also, um, you know, something, you know, it, it could be like a tempo or something like that, just to get your body warmed up. When you go around the track to figure out your time for this magic mile, you would go around the first time easy. You don't necessarily have to take walk breaks if you don't want to. You can if you want to, it's up to you. Second time, you go a little harder. Third time, you go hard. And the fourth time, it's a VO2 max effort. So it's an all out effort. Once you have that time, say it's like 10 minutes that you do it, your half marathon, it'll predict your times for the half marathon and a marathon and also a 10K and a 5K as well. Your half marathon for a 10 minute mile, your half marathon would probably be around a 12 minute mile and your full marathon would probably be closer to a 14 minute mile if you ran that one minute at 10 minutes. So there's this formula that he uses. And what he does is he multiplies it by 1.2 for the half. I also have a spreadsheet. So if anybody on this call or anybody who's listening to this um, wants to go around the track, do a, you know, four loops around the track, send me your time. I could give you the predictors as well. Now from that, then it, he also determines whether what your actual run walk ratio would be, um, you know, for a 10 minute, uh, for like a 12 minute mile, you're looking at like a 30 second run, 30 second walk. For a 14 minute mile, you're looking at like a 15 second run, 30 second walk. So it's, you know, it just depends on what time it is. And it's not based on that 10 minutes that you just did the mile. It's based on what your numbers are for the half or for the marathon. Any questions? Okay. So how do you get started? So once you have that number, once you know what your, what your pace looks like, you want to set a goal. And I did a presentation a little bit ago about defining your A, B, and C races. I would put that in your calendar. I think that for most of us, we need something to help us go. You know, we need a race, we need something, some type of a goal to help us. Um, and then give yourself ample time to prepare for that race. So if you want to uh, do a PR for a race, you know, you may want to start 12 to 16 weeks before a half, 20 to 24 weeks before a full. Now, Jeff feels that you should go over if you want to do a PR for any of these races, you should do at least 14 to 16 miles for a half and 27 to 29 miles for a full. Now, there are various types of walk run intervals and here's some of the common ones. I mean, some people, 
Um, there was one woman in our group who used to do 12 second run, 26 second walk, you know? So it really <laughs> depends on, on how you feel and how it makes you feel. Um, but you wanna have some type of a recovery. So if, excuse me, you're starting out and you're doing like a 530, that would be a five second uh, um, run, 30 second walk. You're going to try to go as hard as you can for that five seconds. And then the 30 seconds is an easy recovery walk. Now, as you build yourself up, you want to, you know, kind of increase that during the week. And, um, you know, we'll talk about this in a little bit, but Jeff recommends doing two days a week for 30 minutes. Um, most of these other run groups like RRCA, they recommend running four days a week. Um, the day that's an easy day is always a Sunday, usually a Sunday. So, but you pick your own day that you feel you want to do a long run. That's an easy run. And you go down in intervals. So, you know, if you typically do 30, 15, maybe on your long run, you would do 10, 30. Um, during the week, what I try to do is I try to go, you know, I'll try to go a little bit harder and, you know, maybe do 30, 15 for the first mile, 45, 15 for the second mile, one minute, 15 seconds for the third mile. I try to do a negative split. That's, that's um, a good way to, to practice this. Any questions? Yeah. Okay. I'll keep going. So how often should you train? Um, you know, again, Jeff recommends two times a week for 30 minutes and then a long run on the weekend. He feels that that's sufficient. And it is for some people. Other people like to run four days a week. Um, you know, during these, these times that you're doing these 30 minutes and some people do it longer. Some people go up to like an hour during the week and then do their long ones on Sundays. Um, you want to try to incorporate at least, um, a hill training, you know, speed training, a fartlet workout, a track workout. I mean, try to mix it up. Don't, you know, don't just go out and do the same thing every day. You know, if you're going to do during the week, uh, you're going to do 30 minutes, uh, you know, running around your neighborhood. It's not really going to help you get faster. Um, it's going to help you get more efficient. I mean, you're going to have some consistency, which a lot of people don't have. And, you know, that's really important. It's really important to have consistency because that's, what's going to help you get faster. Um, when you run, you run, you know, you're not like diddle dallying around, you're running when you're walking, you're walking. And I try to like, keep a space in between my a l k because it's a w a l k right it's a, a slow walk not a slow walk but a regular walk um i'm going to get into some of these workouts in a minute hillary yes um I'm not sure. Did you, did you say uh, why a person should want to do the run walk method? You know, that's a good question. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, for, as we get older, it's just, it's just easier on our bodies. Um, you know, a lot of beginners start with it because that's the way they get into running, you know, and then they start running without walking. <laughs> um, I think the recovery is really important, especially as we age. Um, you know, I found it to be beneficial. I mean, I know <laughs> who I've trained, um, you know, back in 2017, there were these two women, uh, Tara and Veronica, and they both were staggering around a nine, 10 minute mile when we started the group. 
And as they went on, <laughs> they now do like eight minute miles doing the run walk method. Really? They do a two minute um, run, 15 second walk. And they are actually podium, podium material. They actually do podium almost every race that they do. So, you know, you can be fast doing the run walk method. It's not, it's not just you know, for slow runners or, um, you know, does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Okay. So I think the key here, I mean, this is just with running, with triathlon, with anything you do is consistency. You want to be consistent. You want to make sure that you're out there. You know, um, if you're a straight runner, four days a week is a really good place to be. Uh, if you're a triathlete, doing four days is probably not really feasible since you're doing other sports as well. Um, so three days works pretty well. Now, if you want to get faster doing the run-walk method, you want to incorporate um, different types of speed training on the track, including a tempo run, short and long intervals. So, all right, so I'm gonna go back a little bit and talk about different types of runs. Um, so there's the conversational pace, right? That's what we do on Sundays. When we run on Sunday, when we go out long, we are at a conversational pace. You should be able to sing when you're running. You should not be out of breath. You should not be, you know, huffing and puffing. <laughs> Some people are, they shouldn't be. This is, that's not conversational. Um, you want to, uh, just be able to carry on a normal conversation and do the run walk at the same time or run. Now strides are basically short bursts of swift running for about 80 to 150 meters. Um, you know, what you would basically do on a workout is you would go to a track and do these, you know, maybe 10 strides during a workout. Um, it teaches your muscles to go faster and you can, you know, and I mean, this is really taken from the RRCA book, but they say that you can incorporate this two to three days a week. Uh, the tempo run is also known as threshold. So that would be your V, you know, almost your VO2 max, just about. Um, this would be done also at a swift pace, sustainable, generally 20 to 30 minutes or longer. Um, and it basically promotes your efficient running form. And a lot of people don't want to push themselves to that level, but you should because it will help you get faster. Fart looks, which is, I absolutely love these workouts. I'm, you know, just, I just like to have fun when I'm working out. And what I would do, fart lip means speed play. And basically what I would do is when, you know, like I'm running on a lo the Long Beach boardwalk, you know, I would go, you know, slow um, run walk pace. And then I would see a light post and I would run to that I would run to the light post, you know, as fast as I could and then slow down. And that's what it is. It's unstructured. It's just having fun. It's just being playful and just fun. And that's why I like it. Um, hill repeats are probably my most, I hate them, <laughs> but they are important. And basically what you would do is you would try to run up a hill and then walk or jog down the hill. Um, you know, these will definitely help you get stronger. You know, some people don't have a hill, they don't have access to a hill. So they use like a driveway or, you know, some, some kind of incline to do this. And you repeat it several times, you know, take a couple of minute break in between. Track workouts, you know, there are both long and short intervals. The long ones would be more like 400 meters, um, 
you know, or 800 meters. So you'd maybe do six times 400. And then in between you would walk or jog really, really slow. Um, you know, just give yourself a good recovery. But these are definitely the anaerobic or the VO2 max training zone. So, you know, they do push you outside of your limit. You're not, it's not comfortable at all with these longer intervals. The short ones are a little bit easier than the long ones, but they're still uncomfortable, but they're also important to do. They're a hundred meters or 200 meters. So you sprint and then you follow that by a recovery walk or a recovery run or a jog. One of the most important things to do is to keep a journal, um, you know, write it down somewhere. If you have training peaks, if you have like a notebook, if you have like a running journal or something, and just write down the date that you ran, the temperature, the time that you run, you know, how it was outside, what which run walk ratio you did. I mean, I seriously like to change it up. I don't like to do the same thing every time I run. Um, I want to kind of keep it fresh and different. You know, how did you feel about it? Um, what happened during the run? And, you know, if you're like me, something really strange happened during the run and now you write about it. Now, some of the other things that I think are really important with the run walk is, you know, what do you eat before? Um, you know, Jeff always says, you know, if you're going out 30 minutes, you don't have to eat anything. I don't really buy that. I'm much more like, I think you should have something to eat something. Um, I just feel for me, like my stomach's growling. I'm feeling really uncomfortable. I don't feel like I could do it if I don't eat anything. So, you know, so here's some suggestions like a granola bar and banana or an English muffin with peanut butter or almond butter. You know, I like that one because you're getting some protein with your carbs, peanut butter and jelly. I've been having protein shakes like every single day. Like I've been buying, um, the either the Atkins uh, protein shakes, it's like 160 calories, or I buy like the um, uh, these other protein shakes, they're like 26 grams of protein. And they have maybe 160 calories. So it's not like that many calories. But it definitely fills me up. And it and it helps me sustain any workout that I do. You know, some people like a protein bar, some people like banana and protein bar. The banana is good um, because if you cramp, you know, it just definitely helps with the potassium that helps you cramping. So that might be something that works for you. You have to find something that works for you. Everybody's different what they eat before, but I definitely recommend eating something. Okay, what about during... The, now, here I'm talking about the long run, right? So some of us are going out, you know, 10 miles, 15 miles, 20 miles, you know, we're doing a marathon, we're doing an arm, whatever, we're doing something that's long. Um, the most important thing to remember is to stay hydrated. Um, you know, I, that's like really difficult. And I know a lot of people don't even bring water with them, but you really should bring something with you. Um, you know, a couple of things that I like are Moxie light electrolytes with Baca. Um, I just feel like, you know, Moxie light makes a really good product. So sometimes I use that. I also use the right stuff. Some people aren't like, you know, loving the flavor, but it definitely helps in terms of like the heat. It has, um, a lot of sodium in it. So that's good, but I would recommend these two, Moxie Light or Right Stuff, if I'm doing under an hour. What I like to use lately is I've been using the Infinite Nutrition. And what I like about the new, Infinite Nutrition is it has calories in it. Um, last year or two years ago, I was like, no, I'm not having anything with calories in it. But you know what? I, I learned my lesson. I definitely need calories. So I've been trying the infinite nutrition. I use the speed play for under an hour 
or I use the endurance formula for over two hours. Um, you know, if you're on the run, you may want to bring something with you. You know, some people bring, you know, bananas, pretzels, peanut butter and jelly, like you know, little bit sizes. Um, other people bring dates, um, which are good, you know, for a run. Um, you can also have a gel. You can have, you know, lots of different things like that. Um, in terms of hydration, every 15 minutes, you should drink about four ounces of something. Um, if you're opting for gels, that would be about 45 minutes. So give or take. So really think about that when you are going on a long run, make sure you have proper hydration, nutrition, because you need it. So this is something that I often don't do, but I should do is after a workout, you should eat something. You should have something, um, you know, just to help your muscles recover more efficiently after the workout, you know, try to do this within 30 minutes. Um, and then about two hours after your workout, eat something, um, try to drink 24 ounces of water. Another thing I don't do, but I recommend doing, <laughs> um, I just have a hard time drinking and, you know, but it's really important. Um, and, you know, talk a little bit here about, you know, the scale and how much water you lose, you know, you could, when you go out Brian, for a run, you one? Brian, you one? when you hold on a moment, when you go out for a run, you may want to weigh yourself and then go out for the run and then weigh yourself after and see how much you've lost and that's all water. So you wanna make that up in water. Cross training. So for you guys, for those of you who are just runners, it is super, super important to have running specific cross training activities like swimming and cycling. Um, those are two of the best. I personally, recommend the swimming. I know I'm a little biased here with the swimming, but it just feels so good after a long run and it just helps you recover so well. Also, it's really important. And this is something I also struggle with getting in those two times, at least two times a week of strength training. That's super, super important doing those squats, doing those lunges, doing those planks, doing, you know, the push-ups. I mean, this stuff is going to help you and it's really important to get that strength in your legs. Now, when we talk about weather, when it's hot, we're going to go out much, much slower than when it's cold. When it's cold, you can go a little faster, but when it's hot, you really need to slow down. The one thing about cold is you want to keep hydrating. And that's something that a lot of people don't do and they forget about because you still can get dehydrated when it's cold outside. Rain. A lot of people don't want to run in the rain, but you know what? It maybe raining on race day. So you got to get used to running in the rain. And you know what memories are made in the rain. <laughs> so it's important to do it run in all different types of weather. Um, okay, and now it's time for questions. Anybody have questions? Hi, Hillary. It's Stephen. I have a question for you. Sure. Um, a lot of times when I'm running, especially if it's a longer run, uh, I will, if there's, you know, rest stops along the way, what I'll try to do is just jog the distance, you know, for one mile to the rest stop, walk to the rest stop. So I kind of 
consider that to be my walk run method, but that usually breaks down as things get later and go longer into yep. maybe I can run to the end of the block or to the, you know, whatever the overhang is and then just like walk for 30 seconds or whatever. But I'm really interested in trying to, I mean, I've been trying to do that for a while, but um, based on what you're saying, I think I should probably try to just like pick numbers and try to just work on the numbers, like either run for five minutes and walk for 30 seconds or, Correct. or run for it. Yeah, which is, is a, you recommend that as a better would, yes, way to do it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was doing, that's how I, I started. I mean, for the, like five years before I started training with Jeff, I, I was doing the same thing. I was walking through the water stops. Um, For you, Steve, I mean, I, you know, you did a really fast half marathon in Brooklyn. And that was a hot one. Uh, honestly, I think you should try like two to three minutes uh, run and then, um, you know, do like a 30 second walk. Right. You'll be surprised. It's, it's almost like um, it, it's, you'll, you'd really be surprised to how fast you're running. And, and again, like I'm going to say, you know, we got a couple of people on this call who use the run walk and are pretty, pretty fast using it. And I don't think that it's, it hamper. I don't, I don't think it's going to change your time that much. Right. You no, know, I don't, I don't I think yeah. like two minutes. I don't think that like walking up a hill that steep or walking through the rest stop, like I can see the people who I'm running with. And once I start running again, I catch, Catch up. So like I know I'm not really losing time and I also feel probably a lot better and I stay hydrated and keep there's, some nutrition going so there's definitely something about you know doing it and staying consistent with it and the more you do it the faster you get so you're really right. going fast during I, I, I'm you know start sorry Steve I, I, okay. I you know I thought that you were Steve Geraldo that's okay <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's okay. So Steve Gerard, Girardi, he did um, a really fast uh, half marathon in Brooklyn. Right. And, you know, I'm, I don't think that you did a run walk at all, right, Steve, when you were doing that? No. You know, but if you did do a half marathon, you probably would have come in about the same. You know, if, if you, you know, if you did it, you just got to get used to it. And, and it's, it's a little bit weird getting used to. And the thing about it, when you're running, when you go from a run to a walk, you kind of want to like glide into it. It's not like you stop, you know, a lot of people say, Oh, I don't want to stop. It's like breaking up my consistency. It's, it's really not, if you're doing it right, you should glide right into it. And that's like why these accelerated gliders are important because it helps you to glide into your walk and kind of go from your walk into your, into your run in an easy way that doesn't seem unnatural. If you watch Jeff do this, it looks like he's running the whole time. I mean, it, you know, you don't really, it's just so smooth. Right. It's gotta be smooth and it's gotta be practiced. Um, you know, but if you started out, like, you know, if you're a runner, well, I mean, Ray, you, you could probably answer this question better than me because you, you were a runner. Yeah. You know, I was, I was, you know, your traditional runner, you know, somebody who, if they took walk breaks, it was only at water stops and, really only to make sure that I drank the water out of the cup and didn't spill it all over. So I'd have to go back for a second cup. Um, but I switched to run walk because I was really having problems with my knees. And uh, especially that first year, uh, I found um, that I could pretty much run as fast as I could. And in some cases, I actually beat some of my former times at you know races that I did regularly, um, uh, so I I would say, you know, if you lose anything, it won't be much, and the recovery time is much faster, and you know you could, as uh, Hillary said, you could pick, you know, a time interval, you know whether it's you know run three minutes, walk thirty seconds. Or, you know, the other way you could do it is to, you know, pick a distance interval and say, you know, especially if you're going for a really fast time, run a mile, 
you know, walk 30 seconds, which is, which is how a lot of people get started on it, especially if they're traditional longtime runners. So, um, you know, and, and for me, you know, especially since my, my knees are really, you know, really suck, it's, it's allowed me to extend, you know, my, you know, my running career, you know, for a lot longer, I probably would have had to stop running a couple of years by now if I hadn't been doing run walk. Okay. Thank you. So, you know, I, I, the offer is open. If anybody wants to do that one mile track run, send me your time. I could give you, you know, an idea of what the ideal run walk pace will be. Um, you know, it's good to get the, a sense of what that ideal pace is and then play around, you know, with it. Um, you know, I think mine is like, uh, 30, you know, 30, 15 or, um, 40, 20 or something like that. And, and, you know, just, but what I like to do is I like to up it, you know, like I'll go, you know, one minute, 15 seconds. I find that for me, because I'm short, 15 seconds is enough recovery, but, you know, for somebody who's taller, they could do a, 50, a 30 seconds and it's, it really doesn't add that much to the time. Any other questions? Maybe not a question, but a comment. Um, I was uh, I was talking with my friend Leon here in Michigan, and Leon's a, he's like ten states away from finishing his fifty state goal. And we were talking about the run walk method because you know when you go do these Disney races, there's a tremendous amount of people that are using the method. The pace groups are using it, and you know obviously the training plans are put out by Jeff Galloway, so it you know it's got it it's got a huge impact on the Disney races. And, and I was just saying that, you know, like for some people as a slower runner, I get stuck behind a lot of these groups. And then if they're running four across, I, I can't, you know, then I got to weave in and out of them. And sometimes it's frustrating for me, but what I've always noticed is that they always beat me. <laughs> <laughs> well, so yeah, you know, they always conserve enough energy towards the end of the race that they're still going at their pace and I'm slowing down. So one of the things that Leon told me was that he used the run walk method and that's how he qualified for Boston. So I thought that was like a very, very compelling thing to tell somebody who, you know, either just doesn't really want to do the run walk method or doesn't think it's beneficial, but, you know, to know somebody like Leon, who's a seasoned runner, who, you know, his personal experience was that's how he qualified for Boston. I, I'm like, okay, then, you know, <laughs> argument ended. <laughs> really? So, that's yeah. great. Thank you yep. for that comment. That's You're awesome. welcome. There was, uh, 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 there's a couple of women in our group um, and they were running uh, the Bronx 10 miler and they're, you know, they're just, they're newbies, you know, they're just starting out. I think they were running like uh, five seconds, 30 second walk. Right. And they saw a group of, you know, other people doing the method, the run walk. And they were like, what, you know, what are you doing? You know, and they, the, this other group is doing 40, 30 or something or 30, 30. And they said five seconds, you know, 30, whatever. Anyway, the, this other group, they're making fun of them. They're like, oh, you guys, that's all you're doing, blah, blah, blah. You know, they made like a whole thing out of it. Anyway, the bottom line was, was these two women, they came in for, you know, before these other women that were doing 30, 30. Oh boy. So, yeah. So it was pretty funny, but um. Yeah, I mean, you can run really fast, and especially if you have a running background. If you've been a runner most of your life, this is going to be a breeze for you, and you have that that recovery for every you know every time. And getting through a marathon or getting through one of these long distance races makes it so much more doable. I just want to make a oh. couple of comments, Hillary. Oh, go sure. ahead. Sorry, I was just gonna say, I know you can set, if you have, if you run with a Garmin, 
there's some setting that you can set so that it chimes when it's time for you to go from your run to your walk and then go back to running. I, I haven't set mine, but I have friends who do. And when I run with them, I just follow whatever they're doing. So <laughs> I, I use that, but I, I, I prefer actually the gym boss. Um, I just find it just, I don't know, because I can change it. I can, once it's on my watch, I can't change it. But if I'm doing the gym boss and I start out maybe doing 15 second run, 30 second walk, and I want to do a 30, 30, or if I want to do a 40 in the 30 or whatever, I could change it after every mile. And it's just, you know, it's kind of seamless. I actually used to run with two of them where I had one set for a certain time and one set for another time. So it wouldn't <laughs> you get a little bit nuts here. <laughs> Sorry, Bill. That's all right. Uh, yeah, I just want to say something. You just kind of touched on it. You're not married to a pace. You can start a workout or a race at 30-30, go to 45-30. Um, I very rarely do the same ratio two days in a row. Um, one, because it gets boring. Uh, the other thing is just that run, walk in general, it's, it's really spreading. <clears throat> I was at Columbus Circle one day waiting for some friends, one of those big groups, see the team in training, one of those, one of those, you know, 100 people groups that I know never had uh, run walk. And the guy was calling out the different pace groups. He goes, 10 minute milers, 10, 11 minute milers. He says, run walkers uh, go to the left. They had a whole large uh, run walk group. And I remember when I was a member of one of the Manhattan running clubs, uh, I started run walk on all their, uh, you know, long runs. So people are starting to get the message. People are starting to realize that, uh, you know, it's like, I think Jeff or somebody wrote this in the book. He says, you're going to walk. You just, so you might as eventually, most of you are going to walk. He says, why not just build it into the race? And that way you're not crawling the last three miles. It makes it much more consistent, you know, sure. you're just much more consistent, you know, doing it this way, you know, when your walk breaks are, you know, then you don't have to walk up a hill, you do the 30 seconds, and then you walk for 15 seconds, and it just makes it so much more doable. Uh, sometimes when I'm racing in Central Park, only because I know Central Park so well, I'll um, skip a, I'll skip a run on an uphill, and then skip a walk on a downhill. Uh, you know, but if I don't know the course, I'm not going to try to pull that off, uh, but it helps. Yeah. I mean, I agree with Bill, like what I've been doing during races, if I feel really comfortable and really good and strong, I'll just skip my walk break and do a double, you know, yeah. and that just, it's just, you know, and then I'll do my walk break the next time, you know, you don't, it's, it's not, you know, like what Bill said, you're really not married to any interval. A lot of people, though, in the run walk um, do 30-30. I don't know. They like that one the best. Well, yeah. And again, it all depends on the pace you're trying to hit. So, you know, if you're if you're trying to do, you know, so Jackie, I don't know what pace you're trying to hit. But, you know, for, you know, I, the, I did the Disney marathon a couple of years ago and I joined a group that was doing 11 minutes mile. And I think we we're doing one minute run 30 second walk, something like that. So, um, and for the first time I ever used it for a marathon, I, you know, came up with my own pace. Um, but I was sold on it after because it was the only marathon I've ever done that where, uh, I actually had a negative split between my first and second half marathons. So, and that was on a pretty warm day too. So, <laughs> It was crazy that day. Yeah. I did a 446 in Burlington doing 4530. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I think the uh, the year before, two years before that, I pretty much ran the same exact time only. I ran the whole way. The difference was after the race, when I ran the whole 26 miles, I couldn't get out of bed. Uh, <clears throat> when I did the run walk, we walked around town looking for a place to eat. So Yeah. You know. Yeah, I think that's, that's the biggest difference is the recovery. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a really good point. I mean, you know, after the New York City Marathon, when I trained with Jeff on that, I went out to eat with my kids, you know, we <laughs> I was drinking, I, you know. I mean, and I've done races where I just walk through the water stops, you know, as Steve was saying, and 
I couldn't even walk up the stairs. Like I was done after the race. Like I couldn't even get out of the car. <laughs> yeah. So any other questions? Comments? All right. Well, um, you know, my offer stands. So if anybody wants to send me their one mile pace, send it over. I've got, got the spreadsheet. I got the spreadsheet. <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully I covered every, did I cover everything? Okay, good, good. All right, guys, well, have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Hillary.